How to Stay Close to God Someone once stated, Faith never means gullibility. The Thessalonians were on the verge of believing anything. Their preoccupation with end-of-the-world events has lost them sober contemplation on sound doctrine. Paul had to correct their wrong theology. We, on the other hand, live in an unprecedented age of skepticism. People challenge their faith in almost everything. Even today, the apostles' words ring as true for us as they did for the Thessalonians in the first century. He provided them three practical guidelines for remaining close to God. Number 1. Focus on Prayer 2 Thessalonians 3, 1, New King James Version Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified, just as it is with you. The Apostle began his concluding chapter with a prayer request. His desire for their prayers serves as a powerful reminder that believers rely on one another. When someone asks for your prayers, they are essentially stating, I believe God hears your prayers. Paul's request was for the gospel word to be spread across the Roman Empire. God's Spirit moves upon hearts when the gospel freely takes its course, and lost souls come to Christ. Paul likewise desired that God's word be glorified. When people witness the transformative power of God's word in people's lives, they can't help but praise him. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, New King James Version Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Nonetheless, prayer, according to Paul, must be a vital component of the entire process. Despite the fact that Paul was an apostle of Jesus Christ, appointed directly by the resurrected Christ, he required the prayers of God's people. How much more prayer do we require? 2 Thessalonians 3, 2, New King James Version In that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. The apostle also requested the Thessalonians to pray for the messenger's safety. The delivered word conveys the concept of being rescued from danger. Satan's most powerful tools are the human instruments he uses to obstruct real gospel preaching. Paul has a lot of devoted opponents. That is why God's people must pray for God's servants' protection. Prayer is the most powerful weapon we have at our disposal. Ephesians 6, 10-17, New King James Version Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Number 2. Trust God's Promises 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, New King James Version But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Believers must also learn to put their faith in God's promises. Christians must believe God and dwell on His Word on a daily basis. His promises sustain us and restore us to spiritual wholeness. First, God's promises invariably tell us who God is. God is described as faithful in this chapter. Our Christian faith is founded on God's very nature. 2 Timothy 2.13, New King James Version If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Knowing that our Lord is faithful when everyone or everything else is not is incredibly pleasant to the soul. People, all people, will let us down in some way over time. We can be certain that Jesus will not. 
Following that, God's promises shows us what God does. Establish you. The Greek word for establish is striz, which meaning to set firm, to forge. God forges us and establishes us in Him. We become immobile in Him through Him. As a result, we are kept by the power of God through faith. And God will keep you safe from the evil one. Obviously, the evil one against whom God protects us is Satan himself. 1 Peter 1, 5, New King James Version Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. To stay near to God, one must believe every promise he makes. If God is faithful enough to free us from our sin, he is undoubtedly faithful enough to guard and defend our lives on a daily basis. We must put our faith in his promises. Number 3. Follow God's Prescription 2 Thessalonians 3, 4 and 5, New King James Version And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. If believers wish to live intimately with the Lord, they must also follow the pattern for living that God provides in Scripture. God's prescription begins with a commitment to do His will. We cannot be inactive in obeying God. As Paul stated, we are meant to do His will. If believers wish to remain close to God, they must obey. Furthermore, God offers both the strength to comply and a clear comprehension of what we are to obey. God shall direct our steps. He eliminates all barriers. If we wish to obey God, He obligates Himself to ensure that we are able to obey Him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, New King James Version Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. 2 Thessalonians 3, 6-18, New King James Version But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly, and not according to the tradition which he received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you. Nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day, that we may not be a burden to any of you, not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are such we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. And if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, note that person and do not keep company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is a sign in every epistle, so I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Finally, God urged us to be productive, to be busy serving Him in all aspects of our lives. Given Paul's extended emphasis on idleness, the Thessalonians' work ethic was certainly in shambles. While idleness has been the focus of much comedy, the Bible continually condemns it. Proverbs 19.15, New King James Version Laziness casts one into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. Proverbs 24, 33-34, New King James Version A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. So shall your poverty come like a prowler, and your need like an armed man. 2 Thessalonians 3, 6-9, New King James Version But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. 
for you yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you. Nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day, that we may not be a burden to any of you, not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. In fact, the apostle advised the Thessalonians to avoid slackers. When Paul mentioned tradition, he was not expressing his own views. Rather, this relates to the Lord Jesus' words, Christ's commands. Furthermore, Paul emphasized that the slothful frequently ignored God's man. 2 Thessalonians 3, 12-15, New King James Version Now those who are such we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. And if anyone does not obey our word in this epistle, Note that person, and do not keep company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet do not count him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Christians are also to chastise those who are sluggish. These verses contain three crucial words, command, exhort, and admonish. These words also suggest two important applications. First, we are to counsel the lazy, not just by example, but also by teaching in times of ignorance. Second, we must face the slackers. Laziness is a moral offense that must be dealt with. Paul instructed the Thessalonians to take note of the sluggish man. They were not, however, to be treated as enemies. Rather, they were to be admonished as a brother. Too frequently, the church condemns when it should forgive and avoids confrontation when it desperately needs to deal with an issue firmly. 2 Thessalonians 3, 16-18, New King James Version Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is a sign in every epistle, so I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Paul concluded this letter with a prayer for God's peace. Indeed, God owns the peace franchise, and serenity comes to all believers as a result of His great grace.